Well, hello, my name's Relevant, and today on the show, I'm gonna be changing out some capacitors on this uh, old Socket 370 motherboard. All right, so what we have here, it's a gigabyte. Where's the part number? Where is the part number? GA6VXC7-4X. It's a Pentium 3 motherboard, socket 370, and there's a Pentium 3 1000 on it. But this board was acting up. Last time I went to use it for a project, I was getting this error that said uh, bad PC health status in post. I forget exactly what it said, because of course, when I tried to boot it up and test it prior to filming, it was saying PC health status okay. I guess it's an intermittent problem. But there was some other suspicious behaviors, like it didn't want to work with this USB 2.0 card that I had, even though that card worked fine on other motherboards and even with the same install of Windows that I was working with. So the suspicious thing about this board is that if you take a closer look at it, you're gonna notice we have some puffins right here. There's another one here that's real bad. Yeah, look at that guy. It's, it's, it's hard to show up in 2D, but basically the tops of these capacitors are puffed out. And that's a sign that they're bad and could be uh, the cause of our problems that we're having. So I, I, you know, because this board does work and does boot, that's why I'm putting this time into it. But I did go on eBay and for pretty cheap, I bought some replacement capacitors. Actually from a local seller here in Canada even. I haven't even opened this pack up yet. Now, chances are there might be more capacitors worn out on this, but I'm only replacing the ones that are puffed out, all of which had the same specification. So I was just able to buy a pack of the same thing. 1200 UF, 6.3 volts. I got some nice Nichinon, Nichicon, but they're 105C rated, which makes them probably a better spec than the originals. Let's see what these guys say. No, these guys say 105C. I guess they're running a little bit uh, hot in the voltage. It could be possibly because the previous owner of this board let the board run too hot or had a very poor quality power supply that ended up kind of overworking things. Now, I wonder what it says about gigabyte boards that even though this thing has bad capacitors, it still works for the most part. Now, one of the things you have to consider if you're doing something like this is PCBs are multi-layered. You know, there isn't just circuit traces on the top and bottom. There's there's layers in between here with more circuit traces. And sometimes when you attempt to do a repair of this nature, you can break a connection on one of the internal traces. Now, typically you're going to have like a kind of ferrule that goes all through the board and connects all those traces together. But I don't know. You can't bet on this. Typically, if a board starts getting worn out to this capacity, it's just time to replace it. But in this case, I'm feeling experimental. And I got this uh, quite vintage desoldering iron and I'm hoping I can uh, suck off some of these capacitors. How many do we have to replace up here? Two. I'm trying to figure out which ones down here are the right ones is uh, the tricky part, but I got it figured out mostly. Mm. Now the question is, if I give a bit of a grasp on one of these capacitors and then like final, hey, yeah, there we go. That one's still a bit uh, tight there. Come on now. Ah, there we go, that's one. Oh wow, the underneath is puffy too. I wonder what some of these other capacitors look like. The ones that aren't puffy on the top if they're all puffy on bottom. You know, I've never recapped a board before. So I'm just half curious to see how well this is gonna work. All right, now we got two over here. Oh, they show up very, they're just right there. I don't use a desoldering iron very often, so. Didn't really invest in one better than this. And I actually got this for my first motherboard repair that I probably did to a penny motherboard back in the late 90s. It had a bad BIOS chip that was soldered right onto the board. Or so we thought, anyway. I replaced it with another BIOS chip, but it didn't work for various reasons. Probably because it didn't come off the same board and I didn't understand the concept of that. That last solder joint's being a bit of a nuisance. All right, let's see if we can cure on this. That's one side. Come on now. Come on. That's two side. All right. Now the next one. Man, I'm getting some strange smells off this that I don't recognize. There we go. Now I have five of these and I've only pulled four. Ah, yeah. There's one more right there that has to go. Well, that was nice. This one was very cooperative, yes? Yes, it was quite cooperative. All right. Five bad caps removed. Ah, question is, what's it gonna take to clear out those holes? Gotta kinda get them hot again and suck on them. Thing is, this iron isn't the best for 
Hmm, this might be the tricky part, clearing out those holes. This thing's funny, just sprays molten solder everywhere. Yeah, I can't get fusion on those holes. Let's see if I can clear this hole out with more conventional means. This finer tip's gonna get into that hole, and then, poop, almost. Oh, no suction or what, bud? Feel the solder going soft, but then it's like, okay, suck. It looks like I'm gonna have to double fist here. Two irons. One to get that solder moist. Ugh, I just can't get that hole clear. What about one of the other holes? This guy here. Okay, I might have to take a little bit more of an alternative approach here. Heat it up and poke something through it, bud. So I got a little piece of guitar string here. The other thing's happening. There's so much copper layered in this board, it like cools it instantly the moment I take the iron off of it. Or it's just not heating up that solder at all. Oh, that grinding noise doesn't sound good. I got it through though. And essentially, oh, some people are probably thinking this is a butcher job. All this effort, we're gonna have a slight little inconvenience like this block us. Okay, I think I pushed it through, okay. Okay, we got an open hole now. Oh, let's, uh, let's try that elsewhere. So yeah, the trick that I knew was to put some fresh solder on there. Apparently you can solder to guitar strings, it's getting pretty stuck in there. Ugh. The second I pull the iron away, it hardens up. Oh wow, that was fast. I can't believe how fast it hardens up. Can't believe how ineffective our desoldering tools are. Oh, got it that time. Okay, I do believe I have many clear holes. All right, so on the front side of the board, we're clearly labeled positive and negative, or so I would hope. Yes, positive is the empty space, negative is the full space. And of course, the holes I cleared out are not quite big enough. And these capacitors, they're slightly different shapes, so they're not um, quite fitting on the same there. Oh, no, no, that went in nicely. Just gonna prick out these holes a bit, see if I can widen them. All right, now, big money. Let's do this. There we go. And then another one. All this effort. These capacitors could be better implemented somewhere else in my inventory. But I'm gonna put them on this board and then never actually use this board. And one more. Oh, these holes are tight. All right, they're all in place now. The next part is the easy part. Let's just solder these poppers down without uh, compromising traces. Oh, that's working real well. Not. So you get soldered into that ferrule. It's not wicking down nice. Such tiny little holes. It's almost hard to get the solder into them. Sometimes, instead of removing the old capacitors, better to just rip them off so that you have their leads still in the board and then you don't have to mess with the little holes. I'm not liking the quality of solder joint I'm getting here in some of these holes. Oh, trim those puppers down and see if we can reflow it a bit better. All right, so I'm just gonna tack these a bit better or try. That one looks okay. How does that one look? Okay, all right. How about these ones over here? This one's ugly. Now, by no means is this, this a how-to. I, I have a talent for soldering, but um, I've never done this before. They're all on there now, man. So now the question is, we go fire this thing up now, what's gonna happen? Oh boy. Let's uh, give the ever so slightest a dollop. And making an appearance here is a bog standard, very basic Pentium 3 cooler. Very, very basic Pentium 3 cooler, which is tricky to hook onto these edges here. Come on, seriously, get on there. There we go, all right. So um, let's move over to the workbench and see if this thing's gonna even post or if I've screwed it up. All right, well, let's see if this is gonna work. Don't need uh, much connected here. Power supply and the videos. And we can start with that. Well, we'll get the mouse and keyboard in there too. All right, here goes nothing. She spins, is she, oh, oh, okay, we got that. Hey, that happened so fast. Is this thing actually running faster now? Oh boy, that post uh, blinked and I missed it. We gotta capture that and bam. Hey, pause didn't, whoa. Um, I, I hit the pause button and maybe it's causing this glitch. What happens if I hit enter? Okay, Houston, we might have a problem here cause that's, uh, that's not normal. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. So we need a little pishnut here to reset this. 
Where's the reset button on this? Right here. Oh, that's promising. I wanted to pause it. Uh, either way, it's saying system health okay. So uh, let's, um, yeah, let's plug some more stuff into it and see what happens. I've got a sound card here, a sound blaster, and I've got a SCSI card. We're booting an old copy of DOS off this old uh, 300 meg hard drive. Well, it's saying system health okay. Very, very quickly to the point that I can't even see it. See how long this hangs for. Okay, that took a while before, so that hasn't changed. Oh, DOS is booting, need to focus. All right, we are in DOS. Everything seems to be going fine. Let's just try some Doom real quick. I'm not getting sound. Why am I not getting sound? Hello, sound. Oh, maybe the plot thickens. I saw the drivers go. Oh, it is not detecting the sound card. Okay, okay, uh, that, uh, that could be some sort of a problem here, sir. Hmm. Hmm, 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 yes, 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 hmm. Well, best we can do is restart it, see what happens. If that doesn't do anything, I'll uh, power cycle it. I just completely turn off the power, reseat the card. Just have to pay attention to the loading screen here. Oh, hey, finally, it's doing something. Beep, beep, A drive error. Oh, floppy drive's not hooked up. I'm gonna turn it off, get things uh, maybe back to where they're supposed to be. I shouldn't need the floppy for the sound to work. Now let's reseat this card. I'm sure that's not helping. Oh, start on power loss. System health okay, still getting that. All right, now let's pay attention for the sound drivers here. There it is, creative plug and play. Yeah, it found it this time. Okay, glitch I guess. Slowest CD driver ever. All right, blaster environment set to P300. Let's just check here, PSP, there it is. Yeah, we have uh, this in the wrong range. Now let's try that Doom again. Ah. Yeah, there's the sound. I haven't got it recorded or any screen capture. Mostly just here to make sure this works. Yeah, so far so good. You know what? Just punch everything. Except my health is going down to nothing. Whoever thought it was a good idea to have moving forward and backwards on the mouse control? Um, ID, sometimes you guys make silly decisions. Mostly just wanted to confirm that worked and uh, well, it looks like it did. I'm gonna try a uh, Shadow Warrior. I need to enable VESA first to really test it. Screen setup, VESA mode, 8.6. Should have enough horsepower to do that. Oh, conflicting IRQ. Okay, <laughs> sound might not be working. <laughs> might have to reset that up. Takes forever to load off this old hard drive. Okay, yeah, no sound, but that's fine. We just wanna see how this looks. Ah, oh, oh. Yeah, it looks okay, feels smooth. Actually, uh, I think Doom felt like it was a bit smoother than, than it was before. Uh, I think this is a success, or at least at the very least, we didn't damage the board further. So, oh, CD drive. Now is when you decide to be noisy. How about no? All right, so we pulled out the old skizzy bus and stuck in there something a little bit more modern. A's all Z's, the uh, SSD on the SATA controller. And we got her booted her into the uh, Windows of 1998 and she seems to be hoofing her pretty slick chickens. The only question is now, if I go try slamming this USB 2.0 card in there, are we gonna get results this time? Because this was the uh, straw that broke this camel's back before we changed out them capacitors. So we're gonna have to give ourselves a nice shutdown cycle. All right, <laughs> let's slop that into there. Yes, Gordon, into the carrier. Now let's turn it on, because before, it was just hanging. It was just hanging brutal at the Windows booting. That's so far so good. Uh, we got our mouse. Oh, oh, wouldn't you know it? We're getting prompts to install the USB now, which uh, I guess the drivers aren't, well, no, they should be. 
We should just be able to cancel through this and restart. But hey, I, I fathomed an error mode where when you, once we loaded this all up on there, it, it caused you know actual power draw to hit that board. And you only run one or two uh, interfaces. It worked fine. But then once you started loading her up, the capacitors and the power conditioning on the board just weren't having it. Or maybe that one particular card's a little bit sensitive and is a, wasn't forgiving to the glitches that might have been induced by having bad capacitors on the board. Well, apparently our sound card's not working. Okay, we're still getting flags on these guys right here. Tell me I have those drivers on file. Really? They're not just right there. Oh, it's not gonna work, is it? We need the USB driver disc. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, what is this? USB. We have crashed. We have crashed the system. Oh, Windows 98. You are incorrigible. You know that? We know you're glitching. Just go. And as is the hellish nature of this old source software, hardware, whatever you might want to call it, I need to install drivers before this thing's gonna work. And I had the wherewithal to put it on a floppy disk because it's about the only thing you can consistently always read on these old systems. Not that the disk isn't gonna glitch out or anything, you know. It's... Except, you know, maybe let's transfer it over to the hard drive this time. I don't know why I never did that before. That one's smoother than expected. Maybe this thing isn't good yet. Let me guess, I left my reset screwdriver all the way over there. Huh, we'll just jam this screw in there. Oh, I'm sure. All right, cancel. Stop trying to auto detect this. I need to make the drivers available to you first before you can install them, bud. Stop being so huge. Stop being so huge. So let's try this little file transfer again and see what happens. Cause that dumb. Okay. Oh, looks like we jammed on reboot. And now that last screw that I used to reset is now missing. I'm gonna have to go find another screw. See, the problem is I can't be sure if these are Windows 98 idiosyncrasies I'm dealing with or actually a glitching board because you know, Windows 98 has been known to do things like this on a good running system. Do we have to redo that driver? Fine, restart the computer. There's no reason why this USB controller shouldn't work on here. Tuh. I'm gonna go in circles here. Okay. Okay, restart. Oh. Just keep asking me the same damn questions over and over again. Wow. We're just running in circles here now. Did you think to check your main Windows directory? Is it that kind of party? Or did it work and we just don't know it yet? If I just go ahead and plug in a USB now, absolutely nothing. And we haven't got sound either. That's the other thing. It says there's a sound card installed. But if we try to play a sound, your sound card may be in use. Well, I know for a fact that it's not in use. I think you're in use. I'm gonna move this USB card just to be sure. Sometimes you just have slot conflicts, eh? Just boils down to bumping that grind down a bit. Okay, I've gotten this prompt before. Please insert your disc. Disc inserted. Are you smart enough? Oh snap, we're seeing a whole bunch of USB activity here, bud. Move the slot, might be a winner. Oh, oh, mass storage device, USB disc. Oh, USB's working now. Sound's still dinked up, even though it says it's not dinked up. Those speakers are screaming, I can hear them hiss. <laughs> sound card might be in use. Okay, we got a sanity check here. We're gonna, we're gonna install a sound card that I know worked on this board before. Good old AWE32 can do no wrong. I think you know it. All right, this time for sure. CT4170, I don't know. Do you have something to say, computer? No, no. Oh, now it's not detecting any sound at all. Adds new hardware. Let's kick it manual style. No, the device is not on the list. Yeah, you can try to search for it. I don't think you're gonna find it. Does an old ISA sound card qualify as plug and play hardware? What did it detect? It installed something that asked to restart, but it didn't really tell me what. Oh, oh. Oh, you, you little dickens, you. Oh, look. I found my screwdriver and my reset screw all at the same time. All right, well, we're gonna need it. 
Oh, by the way, this is the motherboard I was using in that earlier video, uh, Digital Necromancy, when I was sparring with Windows 98, trying to overcome all sorts of issues. Maybe this ain't just ain't a good board. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Okay, now she's done frigged. K. Not K. Yeah, I've been working on a computer, and it's like, error, this thing isn't working. Okay, that's the button. Okay. I always thought it should be a no, it's not okay button, if I should be quite frank. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pause the cameras because I'm burning disc for nothing and see if I can sort this out. And if I can or cannot, I will get back to you.